There was a million jokes about these. Remember, they'd go down the road, but they'd be in the center of the road because he's sniffing the white line all the way. <laughs> right. You know, all those all those kind of jokes. That, I, I haven't heard that one, but I like oh, you haven't heard that one? one? No, yeah, yeah. Just... Well, another episode of Jay Lone's Garage behind me. One of the most iconic automobiles in Hollywood history. This is... Uh, the 1981 DeLorean, if you saw the movie Back to the Future, you know what this is all about. And uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to drive this car. We're going to meet the people who uh, restored it and uh, built this, this one. This is not the actual car, but it has a lot of the pieces from the actual car. In fact, let's start off with the producer, uh, creator, and writer of uh, Back to the Future, Bob Gale. Bob, come on in. Thanks, Jay. How are you, my friend? I am great, sir. Well, this I'm is... I'm happy to be here. You must have every geek in America follow you around when they find out about that. I mean, I've never seen a film that had such a following like this. When this car shows up, people just go crazy, don't they? They do, and it doesn't even have to be uh, a Back to the Future modified DeLorean, just when they just see the DeLorean. Right. That gold wing door opens up and people go nuts. Now, this is not the actual, actual car. That's at the Peterson Museum. But this car was restored using a lot of original pieces, yes, uh, correct? And this is the a, one they use for personal This is appearances. a replica, yeah. which is used in car shows and people that want to rent it. Uh, and just like you were saying, the types of guys that follow me around, right. love the movie <laughs> so much. Yeah. There are guys that love the movie so much that they said, I got to have a DeLorean. Right. And it's not just a DeLorean, I got to have a Back to the Future DeLorean. Right. right. And they, we'll meet these guys later, but these guys were so good at this. This car is so perfect that uh, I made sure they were hired to restore the original car from the movie. Oh, okay. Well, let's go back to the, the genesis of this film. Were you a car fan? Did you have a car in mind when you were writing the film? Actually, in the ori original two drafts of the script, the time machine was built in an old refrigerator. Refrigerator? Yes, it was an old yeah. refrigerator, and he would have to cart it around on, on a pickup truck. Well, finally, several years late go by, we're actually making the movie, and Bob Zemeckis is a director and co-writer. He's thinking, you know, there's a lot of logistics involved in, in getting this refrigerator in and out of a pickup truck. Wouldn't it make more sense? Wouldn't a Doc Brown have just designed the time machine and built it into a car? I said, yeah. That, that, he said, it'd be a lot easier to shoot it that way. And I said, yeah, that's a good idea. And at the time, John DeLorean was on trial. Right. So he said, let's make it a DeLorean. Let's be completely insane here. So here we are. Now, when you had it as a refrigerator, I'm just, was it an old fashioned refrigerator with a handle like this? Did it have the ice in the door? I mean, did you go through, that's the wrong, no, I want to refer. I mean, were you looking at a classic antique, you know, sort of round? We were looking at the, at the, at the classic, okay. uh, what was it, a hot point? Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th I, think, I think that was it. But, yeah. You know, Doc took the insides of it out, but, you know, we're worrying, well, we make the time machine a refrigerator. Kids are going to go to junkyards and lock themselves in a refrigerator. Right. <laughs> Instead, people could lock themselves in this. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you think of other cars? You go Corvette, uh, 55 Thunderbird. Were there any? No, other the DeLorean was just Always the a DeLorean. perfect thing. Okay. And another story that goes along with that, we were locked into the DeLorean. That's what we want to do. We had the product placement people at Universal. They're always trying to promote deals, right? Right, right. And so one day, the guy that they'd hired to actually do the product placement deals, he comes into my office. He says, Bob, we can get the production $75,000. $75,000 on this deal I'm about to lay out for you. I said, okay, Richard, what's the deal? He says, change the DeLorean to a Mustang. <laughs> I looked at him. I said, Doc Brown doesn't drive a Mustang. Right, right. <laughs> that was it. That, that, wow. Wow. <laughs> That was $75,000 out the window. It, yeah, worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's fascinating. Did you ever think that the film would be as iconic and as huge as it became? Or did it just seem like, as you were making it, did it feel like it was going to be just this, this hit that would live on and on into we, multiple seasons? You never know about that kind of stuff. Yeah. And the script it was rejected over 40 times after we wrote it. Really? 40 times? 40 times. times. Every studio and many studios rejected it more than once. Why? Uh, they what? said we would get this, oh, you know what? It's really nice. It's really sweet. We want something raunchier. We want porkies. We want stripes. Oh, that's, right. what, that's the kind of comedy yeah. we want. Right. So finally, after all this, they kept saying, you guys ought to take this to Disney. Take this to Disney. So, okay, we said finally, well, maybe they're right. Maybe Disney ought to make it. This is the old Disney. Right. The last vestiges of the Walt Disney Company, right. the original Walt. So we go in there, and they've read the script, and the executive looks at us and says, 
are you guys out of your mind? We can't make a movie like this, a movie about incest. This is Disney. You got the kid and his mom in the car. It's incest. We're Disney. Get the hell out of here. Wow. <laughs> I, 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 never, I mean, I, I guess <laughs> technically that, that, that's true, but all right. Uh, okay, so, and it turned out you were at the... Uh, it turned out that, uh, well, once we got Michael J. Fox in the right. movie, uh, he turned out to be the perfect casting. Oh, fantastic casting. And, of course, Christopher Lloyd, but yeah. the whole cast, just everything fired on all cylinders. Did you look at other people? Was there other people considered be, besides... It's always funny to me when I realize that, like, Mickey Rooney was thought well, to be in The Godfather. You know, these, just these casting things. Yes, that, yes. In fact... We actually shot five and a half weeks with Eric Stoltz as Marty McFly. Oh, that's interesting. This, is, this was one of the most insane things that we ever did, which was to say, hey, the movie's not working with this kid. Let's fire him and let's hire somebody else. Wow. Uh, we always wanted Michael, but he was unavailable because of his Family Ties TV Oh, commitment. sure, that's right. And that was a huge hit. It was a huge hit. Ties. So okay. finally, by the time we decided to replace Eric, uh, the producer had pity on us, and he said, okay, as long as you let us have Michael first, you guys can have him when we're done. And Michael, he's 21 years old, 22. He says, well, I don't care. I don't need to sleep. I'm only 22 years old. Right, right. So that's how we shot the movie. Wow. Cra a crazy way to shoot it, but it all worked. And how long did you realize it was until you could get a couple of sequels out of it? I mean, it was a hit right out of the box, wasn't it? It did really well the first weekend. We knew it was a hit when the second weekend's grosses were higher than the first weekend. Wow. Okay. That was a audience telling their friends, you got to go see this movie. Yeah, yeah. And it was the number one movie in America for 11 out of 12 weeks. Wow. Which I think, I don't know, somebody might have broken that by now, but maybe not. Now, do you go to the, uh, when they do those, um, you know, retrospectives, the Comic-Con and all that kind of I stuff? I go to some of them, yeah, but yeah. the most fun is the DeLorean car show. Right. And they have that every two years. And you got all these crazy DeLorean owners. All they want to do is talk about their car, some of them are purists. They don't want, they want to have exact stock DeLoreans. Right. And then there's some that they have their flux capacitors and, right, their, right. and their time circuits. Tell me there. coming up with flux capacitor, which really doesn't mean anything, does it? It does not. No, no. no. Was there any scientific study that went into like, why 88 miles an hour? What? 88 miles an hour because it was easy to remember. Oh, okay. And you wouldn't accidentally drive 88. Right. I, I mean, some people might. But right. Most people wouldn't. So, right. so, so we had that. But we did think about the, the DeLorean's nuclear powered in the movie. Right. So you've, we've got these vents on the back. Right. Those are like the cooling towers right. at Three Mile Island. Oh, okay. So we actually did think about right. how would you put a nuclear reactor into a car. <laughs> You know, but, I mean, things, you, people stay at night yeah, worrying yeah. about that. Stuff. But, I mean, you didn't meet with scientists and go, no, you see, here's what we have. They're just no, sort of, okay. No, but we did meet with a guy who showed us what plutonium would actually be like. So that scene when Doc puts the plutonium in the car, right. that's pretty accurate. Well, it's really fascinating to hear all the inside stuff. It was it. fun. That's, what, that's why we love making movies, because you learn new stuff about things you never Now, I you. imagine after the third film, the networks like we want five it's like when you watch jaws nine or whatever it, it, uh, where the shark is driving a bus or whatever i mean they just get ridiculous did did you guys pull the plug or did they say yeah. no more after we we pulled the plug yeah we said we're doing three of these i mean after we did the first one we didn't know there was going to be a second or right. third one but then when they said okay sequels okay so we made deals for for parts two and three and we really put a period at the end of part three right. and said okay we're done and at the premiere we actually all wore T-shirts that had the Roman numeral four with a circle and a slash. Oh, that's it. funny. <laughs> now, did you shoot two and three at the same time? Back to back, yes. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. it wasn't like yeah, you we wanted to see how shooting. that did. No, that. they said, okay, we know this is, a, this, is a pretty, this is a pretty slam dunk deal here. Right. Go ahead and make both of them. And which was the biggest of the three? The first one made the most money, right. uh, had the highest gross. The second one, I think, returned the highest rentals because the, the studio got better deals right. on the because everybody knew what it was. Right. The, thir the third one was below both of those. Right, right. Fascinating. Yeah. Well, Bob, thank you. That's really fascinating. Bring, the, bring your guys in. Let's, okay. let's meet them. Let's so meet them. so this is Joe, Joe and Terry. Right. Uh, and, and, and Bob Zemeckisheim bent these guys because they brought their car down to where, where Bob was shooting one of his movies, and they wanted us to see their car and autograph it. And we were so blown away by the job that they did that, you know, I, I stayed in touch with them and 
And when the real car was in disarray at Universal, I said to the guys at Universal, we've got to restore this, and I know just the guys that are going to do it. Okay. So here they are. Come on in, you guys. Well, Bob, thank you very much. Thank you, Appreciate Jay. It. Very nice job. Hi. Gentlemen, okay. Joe, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. So, did you guys, which came first? Well, obviously, you saw the movie first and then wanted the car because you're obviously pretty young at the time. Yeah. Uh, was this one of those movies that just knocked you out? You had to have it? I was, when I was 10 years old, I remember yeah. this car coming off of the back of that truck in the movie. And it's one of those things that just stays with you the right, shape right. of a car when you're at a certain age. Right, right. I'm a television writer, and I was working on a time travel show at the time. Right. So we were talking a lot about this movie. And I was like, you know what? I think it's time to get a DeLorean. So I went out and I got a, a stock right. DeLorean. And I was, this is cool. It's not, it's not the thing. It doesn't have the stuff. So and what did you think of it as a car? Forget the fact uh, that if you, did you like it as a car? You know, well, it, I, I, you know, this is controversial probably with DeLorean fans. I love the DeLorean. It's not a great car, you know. 88 miles per hour, that's a dream if you could get it without all this stuff. Um, and it's, you know, it's like a, it's like a go-kart. It's not, you know, no, right. no power steering. So, you know, it was cool, but it, it really, what it, what it is, it's, it's about the doors and, you know, if some people love sure. the stainless, I think it's cool, right, but right. others it's don't. It's a great looking car. Okay. It's not a great car. Yeah. But it's an awesome looking car. It's cool. Well, I think it's yeah. So, Joe, how did you get involved? Well, I, I mean, like, I guess I'm a couple of years older than you because I was 16. When I saw right. Back to the Future, you yeah, were 10, out, so whatever. Age, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I mean, it was instantly my favorite film right. and uh, responsible for getting me into filmmaking and, and uh, art direction. Then uh, it wasn't until much, much later that uh, I actually realized that DeLoreans were real cars. Right. Like I thought they built it from scratch right, for right. the movie. Right. I didn't know. I wasn't a, you know, into cars that much at 16. And then once I realized it was a real car, I was like, oh, it's on. I know what I have to do. I want to build a time machine. Do you guys own the car together? Do you own it and you help fi finish it? What's the story? So I, I own the car. I bought the car. Right. And the Did you know him before you no, bought it? No, I, I, I met him at an auction because he, he was building cars like this. Right. And well, the cool thing, and I'm going to out this story because the years have gone by now, and Bob, you are friends now. So. Joe and his friends were sneaking on to the lot at Universal in the middle of the night right. where they would leave the real, where they had left, Universal had left the real car out for like 20 years where there was birds and nests and rats and they were studying, taking the parts off, getting the parts numbers, figuring out how do I make an exact replica of the real thing because the other thing was just sitting out there. Right. We were doing research. Research. Research, was research as it was. Research. And yeah. there was nobody more dedicated and able to make one of these things. I said, look, I'll I'll finance this whole thing if we think we could make one exactly like the real right. deal. There's a little bit more to the story, though, because, well, first of all, uh, while we did research, the parts remained on the car. I just want to make that clear. Right. And then, the way you said it sounded right, right. You know, gotcha, gotcha. sketchy. Um, and then I built uh, a replica for myself and, and then auctioned it off in 2010. And Bob Gale was there and Terry was there. Bob was like, are you going to build another one? I was like, no. He was like you have to build another one. I was like, okay, so I have to build another yeah, one. You have to build another one. Bob Gale tells you to build a time machine, you build a time machine. I'm guessing there are no wives involved here. Oh, my wife was not particularly happy with this entire no, no. experience. She wanted to do what? The, the car, she let the car look like a belt buckle. She was, it was not her thing. <laughs> really? Didn't grow up with the movie. It was right, just not. Yeah, um, yeah. But, uh, but she met Bob and thought Bob was lovely, so she okay, eventually right, got it. Right. And my wife wasn't super thrilled. Really? When I'm I surprised. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she was like, <laughs> she was like I don't know about this. But yeah. uh, now, looking back, all the epic things that we've been involved with, she's cool with it. Yeah. But I mean, just when you guys are talking, uh, no, this happened in the movie, no, this is the pen That's that terrible. the guy Oh, yeah, used. we're not allowed to talk about that stuff at yeah, home. Yeah, no, you no. can't even yeah. talk. Yeah, yeah. Barely yeah. with each other. Barely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's She's that's like, that's I'll start talking about <laughs> shoes if you don't shut up. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. Okay, it's just so, it's pretty much standard yeah. fare. Yeah, yeah. You know, we had the Knight Rider guys here, and it was kind of, actually, you guys are married, so you're way ahead of, you know, <laughs> right. yeah, 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 so, yeah, 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 so you guys are, yeah, yeah, so, yeah no, with cool. children. You've reached the next, and you have yeah. children. Yeah, I have, I got one, you have like a million. In I have, I live in a shoe, I have four. Four wow. kids, yeah. How old are your kids? Uh, 28. Oh, okay, so they know the movie. Eight. Are, are they into it too? Six and five. Uh, yeah, my kids love it, okay. and, and I don't push it on them yeah, either. Yeah. I mean, they love it legit. So, t so tell us 
what we have here. Now this, I understand, has parts from the actual movie Cars, is that correct? Well, yes and no. So there were, there were two hero cars. The A right. car was this car that we restored, which is at the Peterson. Mm -hmm. The last car, the B car, which was the second hero car, was hit by a train at the end of the third movie. Right. So those pieces were sort of scattered to the, in the universe. And when we were restoring the one for the Peterson, there was a couple of parts that Bob was like, you know, this, this car is kind of the only one that's exactly like right. the one in the Peterson that runs. So when we get a call from Universal, like this one was just at, on the Oscars. It was in the Oscar stage or a Super okay. Bowl commercial. Universal right. will call us and they'll say, this is the one to use for that. It has a lot of the sister parts from the from that trilogy. So do you do a lot of public appearances with this car? I imagine it must be very popular, yes? We get a, uh, this call, you know, I even here being here today, right. I would have thought at this point, I, you know, we'd be done. After the Oscars, I, I, was, I was actually overseas and this car got to go to the Oscars and I didn't. Joe had to go with the, and get it up on stage and be with Michael J. Fox and Seth Rogen. I took so. one for the team. Yeah, you yeah. did. And each time we did a gig, it was like, it can't get any better, right? right? This is it. This is the biggest gig we'll ever get. And then we get a bigger gig and a bigger gig. Yeah, and it's crazy. It just, and here we are at Jay Leno's Garage. Now you're biggest back gig the ever. Again. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, no. Well, let's let's talk about the actual car itself. The '81 DeLorean had the, what a six-cylinder Renault engine. Yeah, in it? Renault, yeah. V6. Yep. V6. You'd never know it, but it's V6. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't much horsepower. It was about 125, something like that. 140 is what they call it. 140. Yeah, but five-speed gearbox. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you had the gold wing doors that were electric. The, like well, electric electric like locks. Right, right, yeah. I remember oh, yeah. Uh, Johnny Carson yeah. was an in initial investor, and he had one, and he was driving around, on, I think, on the 405 freeway, and the battery died, and the electric door locks wouldn't open. Johnny was stuck in it, and the fire department had to come. He had just picked it up, right? Didn't yeah. he pick it up off the docks? Yeah, they yeah. had to come and rescue him, it's and crazy. it was like, uh, he, he was not pleased. Yeah. Not yeah, rain, not pleased. endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, yeah, the band had, band had door. And then it kind of went downhill for the car from there. Yeah. Uh, because it, it is, and of course, this being stainless steel, once you dent it, yeah. it's not impossible to fix, no. but it's impossible to fix. Yeah. I think the original idea was you get into a car accident, nye, 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 you could pop on a new panel. Right. Now, if anything happens, you're in, you're in trouble. Right. Yeah. And I, only very few were painted. They're all, the, the, you, you, they would say you clean, think the clean this dealership the painted. painted yeah. I, think I think the only ones yeah. that were painted, you know, were accident cars, kind of, yeah. you know, because you can't really. I remember fix seeing it. a red one and a couple of others yeah. that came from dealerships, at least, in, in oh, those maybe. colors. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how much heavier is it with all this equipment? Not much? Or? It's a few hundred pounds yeah. Yeah. extra. Yeah. Okay. Metal, yeah. But it's a car you can actually drive. I drove mine yeah. all over. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't drive this one a lot. Yeah, I, I much. I have to. I confess the. Uh, but when you do, it, it's you know. I mean, I've had people follow me on the road and stop you at the gas station because it's I've still had a few still people follow yeah. me home into yeah. my driveway. Yeah, it's happened sure, to me too. It's sure. a little sketchy. Yeah. One yeah, guy cool. cried when he saw it, and I, you know. Who cried when he saw it? It was a fan. It was like I never thought I would actually get to see this. I it grew happens. up watching these things. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. Right. There was never a car that you cried when you saw, you finally saw? I remember I got hit by a car and I cried. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, yeah. That was I, it. <laughs> you know, I just, I don't normally bust into tears when I see a car. But, yeah. but uh, hey, everybody's different. Right? Terry's yeah. a crier. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, you guys also produced a documentary. If people want to see more on this vehicle, they, how can they get the documentary? Uh, you can go to outoftimemovie.com right. and, uh, and order one. It's a DVD? Blu-ray and DVD. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's an excellent documentary cool. made by my friend Steve Concatelli, Great. who followed us around while we restored the, uh, the Hero car. And how long did it take to restore? Uh, it year was a and, year. A year and change. Yeah. But really it was more like two years. Yeah. yeah. You know, really, I mean, and about a decade the of research life and... Of this, yeah. <laughs> Did all the original documentation exist? For example, you know, years later you go to build a replica. Could you go to Universal and go? No, nothing. That was the problem. Nothing existed. Wow. You know, so it was it was a whole lot of CSI stuff. Photo references of like Enhanced. searching through. You know, yeah. going, is that a part number? Enhanced. I think I've got it. I mean, did you meet any of the original crew? They'd probably be in their 60s or so by the time you wanted to do this, right? So we yeah, did, we and a lot of them go. Well, Come on, and, kid. That was a job I did 25 yeah. years ago. Right, you know, right. And, and, and we're like, don't you have fair. like receipts or whatever? Yeah, yeah. They pull out a receipt from Apex or whatever, and it says uh, aircraft parts. Right, right. Yeah. So, you know, we had to 
identify what everything was and then find it. And after all that, I decided to build a time machine. Now, I remember when these DeLoreans came out, Jimmy Carter had that stupid rule that uh, speedometers can only go to 85. They thought that would stop right. people from speeding because you, know, you can only go as fast as the speedometer says. But of course, the speedometer only went to 85. Well, there were, there were three cars uh, built for Back to the Future, the A, the B, and the C. And the C car was a process car to shoot inside of. And it was that car that they had to modify the speedometer to say 95 so that they could actually Get reach up. Yeah. 88. And okay. um, that was one of the things when we were restoring the, the Hero A car um, was it, it never had the 95 mile an hour speedometer. All um, right. So we, it was a choice for us to put it in there because that's what fans you know, are looking for and expect to see. Like another one are the, the time circuits. There's a alphanumeric uh, you know, segment for the, the months, October, November. Right. And in the A car, uh, it was just numerals. So it was 10 instead of October. But we decided to go with the uh, insert car version for the same reason, because fans look in and they'd be like, what's that? I've never right. seen that before. And how bad was the DeLorean that you bought to restore? Was it a nice car and you just had to add the various uh, things to make it? This one was in pretty good shape. I mean, I think the, yeah. I think this one came from Hawaii. It was a running driving car? Yeah, it was a running driving car. Okay. You know, uh, the one they left out, the real one they had left outside uh, for 25 years. That was a gut job. We had to take it down to the, to the frame. And why did, the, I mean, obviously it must have been a huge attraction. Why did they leave it outside and let it go back to... You know, they still have, they have a, that Bu Biff's beautiful 1950s. There's, there are uh, a lot of cars it, out there still. They just, you know, they get handed off to another department and right. they're like, oh, the guys well, they, on the tram see it and wave and that's all it takes. But, right, right. Yeah. Right. You know, after okay. they're done making the movie, they, you know, it's not a priority anymore. Right, right. Uh, I mean, it is to us. Now we're the geeks following Bob Gale around. But the A car, um, I mean, it was, it was in pretty devastated condition, really. Right and uh, a lot of animals living in it, and uh, a lot. Yeah. And so, I mean, the first month was just brooming out all the leaves and, and stuff, and you know, we didn't get down to the nitty gritty till much later. Cool, okay, well, let's, uh, can we take this one let's for a Let's do it, right, absolutely. Let's do it. Joe, thank you very much. Oh, We're oh, gonna uh, oh, thank you. head out and let's, uh, let's see what she does. Is there a handbrake button here? Does it? Yeah. It oh, there we go. Comes, yeah. Close this down. So how often do you take this? You ever take this to go ice cream and get a burger or something? Or not? Not often. No. Mostly just to get it filled up. I mean, in between like shows or commercials, right, right. it's rented out. I was in the Super Bowl commercial last year. Wow. My best. I love when you do pull up to a gas station. You know, the it's in the front is where you got to right, pop right. in the front hood. My favorite question I get as I'm filling it up is, is that one of those electric cars? Has a glug, glug, glug. Yes, as I'm going. It's and that's from people who don't know the movie. Yeah, the kids yeah. go crazy. And by kids, you mean 45-year-old guys? No, weirdly, I, there's something timeless about I think all the 45-year-old guys now have kids, and they're showing right, their right. kids. So you have teenagers coming up thinking the DeLorean is a $150,000 car. Right, know, right. Like Because of the, the, the yeah. doors. And yeah, you can get a pretty nice one for about 23 or 24, right? Yeah. And there was a company in Texas that was redoing them for a while. Yeah, they're still active. I think they're down in like Long Beach yeah. here. Now you were always obsessed with time travel because you, right now you're doing this 12 Monkeys, right? The 12. Yeah, yeah. What is that on? Yeah. What channel is it? It's on, on Sci-Fi. It's on Sci-Fi. Yeah. Okay. You know this movie bit that gave me the time travel bug. That's so funny, isn't it? And so it never left. And so you know, for the last four years, I've been writing this 
time travel show, and we're on our last season. We're big finales coming out. Oh, July. okay. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 something that never really left. Yeah, that's fun. Stays in your blood. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. So what would you rather do? Go into the future or go into the past? You know, it's a question you get a lot, especially when I work on the time travel show. Like, where right. would you go? Would you go right. World War Two? Would you go to meet dinosaurs? Whatever, what would it be? Really, I, think, I don't know if I'd want to meet dinosaurs. Yeah, I don't that, that, that doesn't seem like. Would you rather go to World War II or meet dinosaurs? Realize yeah, my yeah, only the choice Titanic is, is either meet dinosaurs right. or, or go on the Titanic. Why always horrible you know, things? Why not things. someplace, right. uh, you know, paradise or something? Right. Why, you know, for me, it's always like, you know, I'd probably just go hang with my family back, you know, when my dad was young and meet, you know. Right. I think it, it probably the real answer for most people is an emotional answer or, yeah. you know, something. I'd go back and tell that person I love them, you know. So right, I think right. probably something along those Go back to like last Thursday. Right, right exactly where I screwed up that day. Yeah, 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 you screwed up as well. Well, you know, we, they always go into the theory that, you, you know, you, you go back in time, you can't do anything because it will alter the course of time. But right. I think it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's like kind of like, kind of like these video games. It just goes in, you go back and it goes in any direction. Yeah. I mean, anything can happen. Yeah, anything can happen. You know, it can go in any possible direction at all. And it can exist on multiple levels, you know. Yeah, it's it's great for storytelling. And at this point, any change you make in the past is probably going to be, probably might make things a little bit better than they are right now, actually. So yeah, well, that's a, what they always say yeah. that you know, if you kill a butterfly, right, it changes the whole course, the of whole the world. thing, yeah, yeah, butterfly yeah. effect. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you don't love these cars, you know. It's not like uh, DeLorean. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm not a fan. Yeah, I, I like the idea behind it. Until DeLorean got caught with the cocaine, I was a uh, huge, right. he was that the hero, was the thing, he yeah. was an engineer, he was the cool guy at General Motors, you know, everybody else had the white shirt with the button down deal, he had the Italian shirt with the with kind of a blue tint, right, right. And, he, and he had, you know, uh, kind of yeah, like a rock star, long, yeah, he was a rock star in the automotive world, yeah, that's really what, and then he just ruined it, I know he was found innocent and yeah I know but people are found innocent all the time but what do you think of like and I don't really know enough about it but like the big three were out to get them no I don't know, believe any, don't of any of that no yeah. I don't think any of that is true I mean there are probably a lot of people who did not wish him well yeah you know but no it was because, a big thing when he left right it was, uh, and this was not a competition for any existing American car at the time right other than maybe the Corvette right maybe the Corvette but this wasn't competing with Ford Falcons and Mustangs and Chevy Malibus right. and all that Enough stuff. for them to be scared enough. No, so no, I don't believe any of to that. To get the men in black after, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't believe any of that is true. No, I think that's kind of, kind of silly. But that being said, it doesn't ride bad, it doesn't drive bad. It's just the expectation was so high, it was going to be this unbelievable yeah. sports car. Same and thing. when it came out, it was a very nice car. It was a little underpowered. I think for this kind of money, people want to see at least 300 horsepower, yeah. you know, something like that. Well, it's nowhere you near. Know. No, it's no. just nothing new. What do you think of the stainless steel? Do you like the stainless steel? Well, you know, it was an interesting gimmick. It no other a... car has that, right? There's no other. No, and there's yeah. a reason, because it's very hard to work yeah. with. Um, you no, know, wash no. that stainless, yeah. yeah. You know, you clean it with a Brillo pad and all that kind of yeah. stuff. No, I mean, it, it, it was interesting. It was an interesting idea. And the gold wing doors really aren't practical. They don't really seal well. You get water around and, you know. Everybody's still doing gold, you know, like the Tesla now has that gold wing door that the, yeah, the passenger yeah. can get loading your kids in the back. Right, right. I think the BMW, the i, whatever, has something kind of like right, a Right, right, that hedral door. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's more fun as a collector car than it probably ever was as a new car. Yeah. Because as a collector car, you're going to baby it, you're going to treat it right. If something goes wrong, it's not the end of the world. As an everyday car where you got to get to work, it, it, you know. Yeah. Like I said, when Johnny Carson got locked in his, yeah, it was like the laughing stock. Yeah, that's, Oh my God, Johnny never lived it down. You know, could people making fun of him and. <laughs> yeah, know. he had money in the company. Right? Oh yeah, he, he invested he, he, in him. Sam you know, Davis rich Jr. guy gets stuck in his car. I mean, oh. what's funny? The rich guy gets stuck in his car. You know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like when I backed my yellow, my orange mirror into my yellow Lamborghini. I didn't tell anybody. Right. You're not going to get any. Not a lot of people are no, going to be you're like, an idiot. Oh, you're so guy. stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're such an idiot. So, what do you drive as your regular car? Uh, you know, I'm a dad right yeah. now, so I got a you know a Lexus. You're right. right. But I'm, yeah. but, you know, one I'm really. And really how old are your kids? kids? My kid's five. My okay. kid's five, and he loves this car. Loves to climb in it. Loves to oh. play with the doors. Yeah, yeah. 
thing I want is that Jag F type. Is that strange? I love the way that car looks. Great car. So I think that's probably my next. Yeah, uh, yeah. My next thing. You think they'll ever do another Back to the Future movie? I hope not. I feel like they the first one is such a classic and so perfectly yeah. well done yeah. with that cast and that score and right. you know that it doesn't feel right. I mean, Michael J. Fox is really the only one that went on to do anything. Yeah. Anything. Well, Christopher Lloyd, I think. Well, Christopher Lloyd was really famous, famous, but yeah, yeah. Characters, you know, still to this day, yeah, yeah. Still, he's still on television and film. So, how many times have you seen the Back to the Future movie? Uh, far too many. The first one, quite a bit. In film school, that script is actually taught about setup and payoff. It's like one of the most perfect, yeah, yeah. structured films as far really? as yeah. And character-wise, you know, there's a lot of great. I mean, the stakes are, I gotta get my parents to fall in love, or else I don't exist. It's, it's a pretty, right, right. it's a real solid. The writers dream to have that kind of, yeah, you yeah. know, texture to play with. And it's one of those movies they don't really make anymore. That's like it's a comedy, but still has a grounded. Right. Sort of feeling as far as motion, it's a, an adventure. So what was, your, in your opinion, the best movie, the three? The first one? First one. Is, first one. Yeah, yeah. Is perfect. What was better, two or three? Uh, I think three probably has more heart. Two is yeah. some really great time travel gimmicks. Right. They go back in time to the first movie, so they're watching themselves right. be in the first movie. That was kind of mind-blowing when I was you know, 14 years yeah. old. Yeah. And then, of course, in the second movie, the car's mostly flying. They've had, they got the tires turn up and so do you do you think time travel is possible I don't I yeah. don't I have a feeling we'd know by now somebody would have come back yeah, yeah. somebody would have said something so your wife is not a fan she didn't grow up with that movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so this was uh, is she that much younger than you it was about five years, but okay. when I said I wanted one of these, you know, it's after you get married that you, you oh, yeah. drop that bomb. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, want yeah. A, what? Yeah, at one point, Nike, they made like these future sneakers from the second movie. Right. And they rented this car for to celebrate that event for like three weeks straight. Wow. I came back, I was like, we got enough to go to Hawaii now. Now do you love the car? And yeah. my wife was like, we're going to Hawaii. I love that car now. Yeah, well, I guess it can be a pretty good money maker, correct? Yeah. Now, do you have to give a portion to... Well, you know, this car is an agent. Oh, okay. So they call, you know, and I I have to turn down more than I can do. Because it's busy right, right. Making TV. And uh, in fact, when it was on the Oscars, I couldn't even go to the Oscars because I was over shooting something in Prague. So it, right. But it, 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 it's in more demand than probably I am. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. There was a million jokes about these. Remember, they'd go down the road, but they'd be in the center of the road because they'd be sniffing the white line all the way. <laughs> right. You know, all those, right. kind of, all those kind of jokes. That I, I haven't heard that one, but I like oh, you haven't heard that one? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, what was the hardest single part to find during the restoration? I would say it's uh, some of these hoses in the back yeah. are helicopter hoses. Oh, okay. You know, you know when we were restoring the original car, all those, those aircraft parts on the back can't get them. Some of them are classified parts, and when you look them up, suddenly the FBI right. is asking, why do you want this kind of host? Right. Uh, so, you know, we have, you have to deal with that. And then at some point, there's like a gyro mount that used to be in the bottom of a fighter jet yeah. from World War II. They had stuck that on the back of it. So we have to go track one of those down. Yeah. And yeah. it's impossible. And you got to go to junkyards and talk to a lot of strange people who have helicopters taken apart. And then you got to haggle. Yeah, yeah. You know? And one of those hoses alone are $250. And, you, and then the only references we had were these old photos in the Universal Studios archives that were black and white. And, you know, there's like a, a Panasonic speaker grill on the top of this thing that right. we found in a photo. No one ever knew what it was. And we enhanced the photo like Blade Runner. And we were able to track all these crazy objects down. It was like a treasure hunt yeah. around the world. Yeah. Sorry, thanks for being a uh, custodian of this piece of history. It's really fascinating. I appreciate you having it's, me. It's automotive history and it's also movie memorabilia history. history. Yeah. I mean, this is, there's the Star Trek Enterprise, there's this. Right. 
you know, there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, I think not that many are iconic when you think about it. You got the Knight Rider car, that's another one. The Batmobile. Yeah. Smokey and the Bandit. Smokey and yeah. the Bandit. Well, nobody remembers that car, though. Oh, well, the Trans Am, the car. Yeah, the car. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of Jackie Gleason, the Brave. Right, right. But, uh, yeah, yeah, but there's probably no more than 10 or so. Yeah. I mean, the Bullet Mustang, that went for crazy money. Yeah. To own the thing from the movie that made the made an impact on you. It's, right. It's really cool. Well, thanks a lot. It's a lot of fun, and like I say, it's it's so accurate. It's so dead on. We appreciate it. Well, thanks for coming. Pleasure. Thank you for having and us. Give my best to Joe. I will. And Bob. And Bob. Mm-hmm. <laughs>